Okay, ready, go. Ready, go. Push the frontal view here. Go. Your back swing is uh, fairly short, as you can see here, about this much here. And then, back swing is slow. Okay, back swing is slow. So essentially, what you're doing is from here, using your muscles, you try to hit the ball. Yeah. You're a strong guy and uh, still generate the distance over 300 yards. However, when you get older, mm -hmm. suddenly the distance drops quite a bit when you rely on your muscles. Okay. And you start wondering why. It's yeah. because of your swing style, just okay. relying on the muscles. Okay. And then in order to uh, have this jerky uh, swing, your body is almost uh, jumping off the ground. Right. The down the line view, essentially we'll see the same thing here. Go. You only stop about here. And sometimes when you have a bad shot, it will be uh, to the right. Mm -hmm. Your body is moving because of this jerk motion here. Yeah. Your body is moving away from the ball. Okay. So sometimes you have a toe shot that the ball goes to the right. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what you need uh, mostly is uh, to develop good rhythm. And particularly, have a more active backswing. When you have active backswing, the downswing should be easier. Uh, this is uh, because of the human muscles, the skeletal muscles. The muscles cannot generate exactly the same amount of force all the time. The, the amount of force the muscle can generate changes depending on the situation. One of the factors is uh, uh, length, length of the muscle. Another one is uh, motion velocity or muscle contraction velocity. And then the third one is uh, when you start from re relaxed state, the time also plays a, a role here. But in the end, the ideal way of using the muscle is the so-called the stretch shortening cycle. So stretch shortening cycle. So the muscle has to be elongated and then shortened without the relaxation. So when we use the back swing, well, back swing is uh, used as a counter movement. So motion going in the opposite direction followed by the main motion. So when you have a continuous transition from backswing to downswing, the, the muscles will be elongated and then shortened. So it's, uh, you're using the stretch, uh, stretch shortening cycle. When you use the stretch shortening cycle, with the, the same effort, you can generate a lot more force. So when you have uh, active backswing, actually in the downswing, it should be easier. With the same amount of effort, your, your, your muscle can generate actually more force, or for the same amount of force, you put less effort. But if you go slow here, slow, and then try to hit hard, then it's mostly uh, shortening, muscle shortening. Muscle shortening is actually the worst in terms of the amount of force generated. So uh, it's called concentric contraction, but um, so and particularly when you have to generate faster motion, uh, in concentric uh, contraction, your muscle cannot generate that much force. Yeah. That's why you have to put a lot of, a lot of effort. Yeah. But when you get older, still you are relatively strong, but you cannot really um, handle that kind of uh, effort. So suddenly uh, the distance decreases. Um, but so we need to make uh, the back swing more active and have more ballistic action or rhythmic action. So. Uh, Today, what, what we'll do is uh, we'll use uh, the so-called step, uh, step swing drills. But with that, you have to develop good rhythm. Right. Particularly have active back swing. Right. Active back swing followed by an active down swing. Right. So instead of slow here and then try to push <laughs> hard. Right. Okay. So let's start with the, the rope swing first. Okay. This is a bit shorter than I usually um, use. My students uh, cut it a bit short. But the swing the rope back and forth continuously. But here the goal is to move the end of the rope fast. Okay. Okay. So 
So it's not about your rigorous body motion, but using the body motion, you have to actually promote the good motion of the end of the rope. Swing back and forth. And as you do, as you do, instead of using the arms here and then try to go down here, use the shoulder turn and then throw. So use the shoulder turn as much as possible. And as you do this, as you do this, it's not just the rotation, but the lower body has to have a little bit of up and down motion here. Have the field of up and down motion. So in the back swing, you use the right leg. In the down swing, you use the left leg. Okay? So have a little bit of up and down field, but to maintain the spine axis. Then swing becomes a rhythm. Yes. Then, when you start the downswing, try to delay opening of the chest and the pelvis. So instead of going this way here, try to go more this way here and then turn. So delay the opening of the chest as much as possible. Mm. So currently what's happening is uh, your right shoulder is going in quite a bit here. Yeah. Okay, you try to your swing pattern, because uh, there's a right arm dominant here, yeah. you try to go a lot with this here, but instead, use this here. So have the, the image of uh, opening the chest with the left yeah. shoulder, instead of closing in, okay. using okay. the right shoulder. Still, currently, the upper body is moving this way too much. Okay. That's why oftentimes you, uh, you have a toe shot and then the ball goes to the right. So you have to limit your shift motion this way. How do you do that? <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, you, so you have to use your left leg well. Okay. If you push the ground down and outward with the left leg, swing like this, then it will limit motion toward the target. Okay. Because the, uh, when you push the ground down and out, then the force coming from the ground, it will be inward and upward. So you don't want me going forward? You're going too far. Too far. Too far. Mm -hmm. So your right shoulder is going in, and you're, you're moving too far. That's why oftentimes the, the distance from the body to the clip is too much. You have toss it and the ball goes way to the right. Yeah. Almost you're, you're avoiding the ball like this. Right. right. So you have to have a, an imaginary wall here. So you don't move your body any more than that. So once you finish the backswing here, and then just to try to turn from there, like that, yeah. instead of shifting a lot, or pushing the right shoulder in a lot. That's better. Now, now in the back swing, at the end of the back swing, you have, you have to give a little more time. The current, you are rushing down too much. Okay. So uh, in your regular swing, the back swing is a bit short. Yeah. And then you try to come down using the muscles, right? Right. Increase the back swing size, so uh, you have to turn the shoulder a bit more, okay. and then let the club go a bit more, and then give more time here. Okay. It's not a complete stop. It's still continuous motion, but you give enough turn here and then come down instead of about here and try to use the okay. muscles. So turn the shoulders as much as possible in the back swing. And then also move the rope really fast in the back swing. Using the shoulder turn. Turn.
Yes, now uh, this motion is uh, reduced. Yeah. That will help in terms of uh, maintaining a good contact. Okay. Now, your stance is a bit wide. Yeah. Okay. Your stance is a bit wide. The, what that does is uh, oftentimes it limits the lateral motion of the pelvis. So when you have wide stance here, the leg is uh, going outward here. And then when you turn, because of this, your pelvis cannot move away that much. Okay. Rather, the hip goes backward. So you're spinning like this. But they have a little bit narrower stance. And then shift the pelvis slightly in the away direction. So when you start the back swing, you have to shift first and then turn. Huh. So let's see. But it's always talking about the slide, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's called a slide when you do this. Oh, okay. A shift. Shift means a intentional uh, motion. Uh, on the way down, so what happens is uh, you go up here and then you're going like this. Uh -huh. Instead, here, go here, remember, keep it closed, and then throw here. Okay. And stand on the left side well. So, what should happen is uh, this motion here. This is what the, the field you need to you, you need to have here on your on your uh, spot here. This is always your spot. Okay. <laughs> so, if you have a little bit of shift motion, it doesn't have to be a lot, but the shift is always a uh, shift first and then turn, okay? as if you are you are pulling a lawn mower uh, cord, right? Okay. So you are bringing the shoulder up this way. In order to do that, slight low body motion going this way and then turn from here and after the turn during the during the back swing you will shift the back slightly okay. this is called the recentering okay. because initially you have a shift away and the slide uh, uh, is too too quick so mm, and then about this much okay. so you will have a little bit shift away and then recenter during the back swing here so by the time you reach the top you already have this recentering. That from here, just the turn and then okay. throw. Okay. So, so shift away slightly, the recenter and then turn here. Shift away, recenter and then turn. Shift away, recenter and turn. It doesn't have to be big, but it's just a matter of which goes first. So before you turn in the downswing direction. You have to introduce yeah, this recentering motion. Right, yeah. And that's it. Once this is done, once you start the turning, then no more, no more, no more shift. Okay. And then turn. Ah, we are moving. We love you. So imagine, imagine we have a triangular space here on, uh, on a big meter. Right. Okay. Full body mirror here. You put the two tapes, and it will give you this a triangular shape here. And then inside the the triangular space, you are moving your body. That means your upper body is not moving either this way too much or this oh, way too much. So in your case, you are limiting this motion here. Right. Then going too much. Okay. Going too much. So try to confine your motion in this space. Instead of coming like that. Yeah. Then what happens is the turning and the shifting are happening at the same time. That is hard to uh, uh, concentrate to impact here. Right. So what, hap what should happen is you go shift away in the slide recenter. From there, just turn and throw. Mm, and then throw. Mm, and then throw. So that you can stand on the left side right away. And also part of the reason why you have to shift the upper body or it's almost a sway. Okay? Right. Sway means the upper part is moving a lot here. Right. This is sway. Slide is this. Yeah. And the shift means uh, just a purposeful uh, motion, lateral motion. So I want to shift, not sway, not slide. So go up here, from here, and then you are shifting back. This is recentering. Then 
your knee is bent here, right? right. And by pushing the ground using the, the leg and then turn here. Ah, okay. <laughs> but if you bring this side down too much, right. then the pelvis has to sh uh, slide quite a bit to make a space for your elbow. Okay. You're currently going down like this. Okay. And then here. Because this is coming down too deep here. So you have to, your pelvis has to uh, slide and then your body is moving this way. Right? So bring the elbow or in front of your body. Yeah. And then from there, slide recentering, push and then come this way. But here, all effort is coming from here, but this is not doing much. Not right. Here, throw. Not, not this one here only, but rather throw. You have to use the left arm a bit more. Mm, here. So okay. This, yeah, this causes uh, all the... So if you delay the... This is the... If you delay opening of the chest, so go up here. Go up here, the slide recentering here, still is closed, and then your arms are coming down without opening the chest. Come down here, and then turn here, so that by the time you reach the impact position, the shoulder will be slightly open, but not much. So again, go back here, and then slide recentering. Oh, whether you recenter, still you have to keep the close the pelvis position instead of opening it here. And then the arms will come down this way here. When the arm comes here, then automatically you will open the body in the core like this. So from the closed position, go to the top. From the closed position, bring the arms down. Yeah, and then with that, turn the body. And then do not lean this way too much. So uh, there should be an, uh, an imaginary uh, wall here. So your upper body is not going any further than that. Then turn around from there. So let's use the rope again. Try to intentionally uh, eliminate the shift. So uh, once you are done with the backswing, then start just to try to turn from there instead of Shifting your body a lot during the downswing. Okay, there's a wall. Okay, there's a, an imaginary wall there, so you cannot move the upper body. It's too much. So make it continuous. Continuous, continuous, continuous. Use the left side more. You're opening the body with the left shoulder motion instead of closing in with the right shoulder. In the back swing, your rope slows out quite a bit about here. It almost stops here. Okay. You have to let the, the rope go all the way. So the rope, when you swing the rope, in the back swing, in the back swing, if you have a fast enough back swing here, this should happen. The rope has to come all the way. But in your case, what happens? Your rope stops about here. It slows down quite a bit here. Let it go all the way. So pay attention to the end of the rope. Okay. Let the end of the rope go all the way in, okay. wrapping around your body, doing the back swing. So the reason why the rope goes uh, to your neck in the back swing is because you go flat here. Early on you start flat, and then the rope goes here and then moves up here. What do you mean, sir? So here, let's go. Go to back swing, back swing. Yeah, here, this is too flat. Your hand position is too low. You can turn, 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 turn. So bring it a bit higher here, and then let the rope go this way. So it'll cross your right shoulder, and then go around your body, under your armpit here. Okay. Instead of 
you go down here, and then it moves, the rope goes up like this. So in other words, you have to bring the rope a bit higher, so that it goes down here. Instead of go flat here, then it will go to your neck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you should be able to uh, consciously control the rope motion. Because uh, this is uh, completely flexible. This is completely flexible. So yeah. unless you guide it correctly, then it goes everywhere, right? Okay. Oh, this time it, the rope go, went this way here. The rope went this way. That means uh, you have this motion. If, uh, if the plane is reasonable, then this happens. Try to intentionally uh, keep the rope below your shoulder. Right? So you should be able to control that by changing the backswing. hands are too far back here, too far back here, you're guiding here, backward, instead. And then if, if you just use the arms to, to control that, then it's hard. So again, let's go, go up here. If you just try to bring the arms high here without changing the body posture, soon you will come back to this position here. So what has to happen is, go to this position. Okay. You have to actually bring the shoulder higher. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Instead of going flat like this. Okay. If you go here, then it's also easier to uh, recenter. Okay. So when you bring the shoulder actually higher, and then without changing the hand position, if you bring the shoulder higher, then the hands should be here. But if the shoulder was flat, then it will be back here. Okay. So try to bring the shoulder higher. And still you're moving this way too much. Yeah. yeah. So in order to improve the direction control, right. then you have to limit this motion. Okay. If you want to have a consistent impact, then you have to limit this excessive uh, shift here. Okay. So you have to push the ground outward, outward here, confine your body motion within this triangular space. You have to have that imaging. Right. Confine your motion within this triangular space here, instead of going too far. Keep it uh, within the triangular space. So ultimately, the goal is to let the end of the rope go instead of shifting your body a lot. The rhythm can be certainly improved, but if you keep shifting the body this way too much, then you will have impact issue. So one thing here is now your, your motion is uh, getting more rhythmic because your backswing is more active. Right. Okay. So even if we don't change anything, right. but simply uh, increase the sp uh, speed of the backswing, your motion still bec uh, becomes a lot more rhythmic. Okay. So when you have a good rhythmic backswing, downswing will be easier because uh, with this, the muscles are elongated. And you, are, you are going into a straight shortening cycle here. So you can generate large force. Okay. Okay. Again, uh, but uh, one thing. So uh, the two purposes of the rope swing is to uh, generate consistent swing plane, okay. back and forth. Okay. And then the second one, you wait enough 
when the rope goes around your body, then start the bouncing. So no rush down. So in the back swing, all you need to worry in the back swing, all you need to worry about is keep enough turn here. Don't worry about going down. Okay. Imagine a swing. When somebody's riding a swing, right. you push, right? But you don't push when it's coming up. Right. Then somebody gets hurt. Right. So you have to wait until this is completed and then mm -hmm. push. Okay. The same thing. In the back swing, instead of trying to dominate it, let it go all the way. And then just elongate your muscle. And then let it go. Mm -hmm. Yes, use the good shoulder turn. Let it go. Okay, so let me uh, record this. And then when you do the swing, pay attention to the rhythmic, ballistic rhythmic motion. Instead of putting a lot of effort there, feel the rhythm. Okay, ready, go. Okay. Now, if you look at this rhythm, you don't have a recentering motion here. So, in the back swing, you're just shifting this way. In the down swing, you're shifting this way. So, you don't have the recentering motion during the back swing. Watch this. Here we go. Okay. Just that when you turn this way, your upper body just goes this way, lean this way. But you don't have really this recentering motion here. Alright, I'm not coming forward. So shift away, and then you have to introduce this recentering motion right. during the back swing. Okay. So what happens is uh, again during the back swing. Ooh, and then coming back here. Okay. Ooh, and coming back already. Recentering is completed. Then you can really throw the rope by okay. pushing the ground. But if your body still stays here, yeah, the back, then as you turn, your body shift. Okay. That's why you have to shift a lot. Right. So do the shifting early right. in the, at the end of the back swing, and then simply turn in the down swing. Mm -hmm. Now, as you intentionally try to introduce that motion, because you're not shifting this way that much, you're shifting this way a lot. Okay. So in order to have a good recentering, you have, actually have to have a good shift, shift away. Okay. Shift. If we have a good shift away, it's a lot easier. Shift away and then simply return to the initial position. Okay. This is recentering here. Okay. But if you don't have this and the intention to try to shift it, then you fall. Okay. So keep more shift that way, and then simply coming back, let it go. Now, as you do that, as you do that, currently the rope is going this way, it's way right. outward, the swing plane is way outward. Right. So try to uh, square the swing plane. Throw the end of the rope this way, not this way. Okay. Mm, still it's going outward, so let me uh, stay on this side. Throw to me, way inward here. It'll be a challenge for you. Uh, the rope is going. Yeah, now, now that was better. Keep. You don't have to put a lot of effort. Okay. You don't have to put a lot of effort. Try to f uh, feel the motion of the end of the rope here. So, if I do this, I don't put that much effort, but still I can generate reasonable speed here. And then pull it in, pull it in, pull it in, push out, push out. Right? Because what's important is the speed of the end of the rope. Yeah. 
no need to put a lot of effort there. Okay. Feel, feel the motion of the rope, and then you should be able to throw it the way you want. Yes. 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 Now, that's good. As you swing this way, you have less problem in the back swing. Right. Because you want to roll orient the plane more this way. Right. Naturally, in the back swing, it goes a bit steeper. Yeah. And although it still goes up here, but it's not as bad as uh, you know, before. Right. Okay. Yeah. So again, swing toward me. With that, now, uh, when you turn this way more, then the left leg is uh, straightened more. Yeah. yeah. Naturally, because you have to turn this way. In order to turn this way more, you have to push the ground right. better. But if you try to drop this side and then try to throw out, right. there is uh, no room for uh, right. the, the action for this leg. Right? Right. So again. Feel the motion of the end of the rope and then throw. Oh, that's too much. Yeah, still, is a, really, a, you, you have a right arm down in this swing. Yeah. Now, let's use left arm only. Hold it with the left hand and then swing. So keep your, keep your right arm on the belt or you know, somewhere. Just try to use your left arm and throw the rope. See, you try to swing the rope with your arms. Instead, the main speed is coming from the body motion. So what your arm does is just hold the, hold the rope and control the direction. So the, the motion is actually coming from the lower body action. Right. And this is just controlling the, right. the plane. Instead of <laughs> trying to swing all the way. So throw the rope with the body action, throw. <coughs> and even back swing, the same thing, back swing, the same thing. So after, <coughs> after the down swing here, and then you try to swing this instead just go here and then turn the body and then move the rope. Okay. Turn the body, turn the shoulder and then move the rope. Instead, try to use the arms, okay. both ways. But at the end, the, the, the motion is out of control. At the end of the flexing motion. Okay. It's too uh, too rigorous, yeah. <laughs> and you is it out of control? Yeah. So you have to uh, speed up and then slow down, speed up and then slow down. Yeah. This has to be the nicely done. So you have continuous motion like this. Let it go around your body. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go instead of. It's a baby, let's say. Okay. When you are yeah. shaking a baby, yeah. you have to control this motion really well. Is there a... Essentially, here, part of the reason why at the end it becomes a stable is because you're stopping here. Your hand stops here. Okay. When you stop here, then the rope, will, from there it goes, uh, you know, this way here. Right. Then it clears up here. Yeah. Instead, let it go all the way here. Okay. Give uh, more motion, okay. give more turn, so that nicely uh, the, the rope nicely uh, slows down.
that's a more, that's a more stable here. That's more stable. So when you just rely on the muscles, you tend to just use the muscles without even thinking the, the right. whole connection or sequence. Right. But if, if you want to use your body better, right. then you have to uh, control the timing of all the joint motions. Right. And you have to clearly know what is the target motion you want to generate. Right. That's the motion of the end of the rope. Right. So whether you're using both hands here, I can still generate fist, fist speed, but it's not because of my arm strength, right. but the, because I use the body, the whole body. Right. So you can do the same thing with the right arm only, throw, 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 hold, left arm only, left arm only. So let's do this. Start with the both hands. And then after swinging a few times, then left arm only. Then after that, both hands, right arm only, and then both hands. Left arm only. Oh, well, continuous, continuous. So that you can feel the swing plane. Both, both. Make sure you feel you you know where the swing plane is. Oh, is it going too much out? Uh, this way, this way, this way. And then right arm only. Right. Throw this way, this way, this way. Both. going outward, outward, outward. So you put a lot of effort here, but you don't control the rope that well. Right. So uh, you can hit far with uh, your muscles, but it's hard to control the motion because uh, you are relying on the strength too much. Right. So again, when you have a rhythmic motion, mm, 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 mm. I keep the same motion. So at the moment, you don't have to put a lot of effort. So just to try to uh, control the rope motion nicely and consistently. Yeah, easy, easy, but to make, make the rope motion fast enough. Let's say this field here. Go away, try to go away as much as possible. See how, how far you can go. It's okay if you go away and as long as you can recenter, that this is not a problem. Right. If you stay here, then that's the problem. But if you shift away and then recenter in time, it's not a problem. So, intention try to do this. Go away and then come back here before the action is completed. Still, in terms of your hand motion, yeah. you, your hand is up here. The hand is up here, but your hand is moving this way too much here. Okay? It's going this way. So if I uh, come up with a, uh, uh, an ellipse following your hand pad, then the, the ellipse is uh, going this way. It's a long axis is going this way because your hand is going in too much. So if this is an ellipse you, you uh, create with the hand motion, if the hands go in too much here, then the long axis is going this way. So um, normally, if your hand motion is visible, then here's an ellipse 
uh, you know, from the head motion, but the long axis going horizontally. Mm -hmm. So you have balanced hand pad here. But if your hand goes in too much here, what happens is the hand ellipse has long axis going this way. It's, uh, so it's deformed. Like your hand is, hand is going too much here. If you drop this too much here and then try to lift up here, then the ellipse is uh, inclined this way here. So in your case, currently, uh, it's, a, it look, uh, it's a inclined this way because your hand is going too far here. So, it, so you want it to go away? You have to adjust the hand, hand motion. So instead of, from here, try to move the hand toward the target a lot, try to bring it more here. More down. More, so from here, more away from your body here. Then you will have a balanced ellipse here. But currently you are. I'm coming. Okay. Mm. So. Yes, 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 yes. Like that. Then it's it's easier to control the direction, because if your hand goes away from your body a bit more here, then you can keep it a bit close on this side and then turn this way. But if this is going all the way here, it's hard to turn. So try to move the hands or this way. On the way down. More this way, more this way. So try to, yeah. So from this position here, yeah, if your club is in this direction, try to pull the club along the shaft here, then hand will travel this way. Okay. So give more drawing a sword type feel here. Instead of trying to cut something by pulling the hands this way and then try to turn the, the sword this way, okay. try to draw a sword this way here so that your hand can go this way a bit more. But yet, on this side, on this side, keep the hands closer to your body so that you can easily bring the rope this way. Imagine this. If your hand goes here, or away from your body, instead of lifting this up here, go out here and then bring the hands close to the body. So you can turn this way better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in other words, um, instead of pulling this in a lot, and then having severely outward the swing plane here. Right. If you let it go here, okay. you're going more this way here. Yeah. So then naturally, you will be able to keep the swing plane okay. more this way. Okay? So that has a lot to do with the, your impact, the characteristics. Impact characteristics. Okay. Particularly the last three, it was all to the right. right. It's because you're pretty much moving the hands quite a bit here, moving away from the ball. Right. So but if you let it go here, more away from your body here, right. and then just to turn around, then it actually has a balanced ellipse here. Okay. Okay. But if you tend to move the hands quite a bit this way, then naturally everything will be shifted this way. I actually had another golfer yesterday with the same uh, issue. Okay. Because the hands are traveling this way too much, the body shifts quite a bit during the Bouncing, right. that it that causes trouble in, in terms of impact. Right. So your goal is instead of bringing the hands here, try to bring the hands more out here, mm -hmm. and then more balanced the turn here instead of shifted bias the turn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bring this in. Bring in more. Bring in more. Bring in more. Yes, yes. Yes, turn the body like that. Yes. 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 That's, that's the idea. Okay. As soon as you turn the body well this way, and then bring the rope this way, your leg is going fairly straight. Okay. Because you can support your body well. Okay. But if you go this way here, shift the body this way quite a bit, then you're throwing out. So make sure you turn this way. Let the hands go more out that way. Yeah, out and then yeah. turn. Yeah, 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 yeah. So let me record this. So try to uh, swing where I am, toward the, where I am. 
Okay, ready, go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. So your goal is to turn this way instead of going outward here. Then shift quite over here. If you turn this way, naturally you you will shift this way less. Okay. Oh. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm hmm. Oh. So I'm slightly on the left side of the target, and you are throwing the rope toward me. And you have a good body turn. When you have a good body turn, look at the left leg here. Yeah. It's well straightened. Right. Let me watch from this direction. Again, the same thing. So set the target to uh, the door, door knob over there. This one? Yeah, which is on the left side of your tar uh, the target. Yes. So, uh, yes. Yeah, way better. Yeah. You should want to see uh, your final position. You're going way this way. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one. Yeah, more more turning. Yeah, turning. So you have the image of image of letting the hands go away from your body a bit more on this side here. Right. So the overall, if you want to draw an ellipse here, right. it's got to be balanced, no bias, so that the long axis goes horizontal here. Right. But if you move the hands this way too much, then the ellipse aligns this way. Right. If you drop your hands too much and then lift your hand, then the ellipse goes this way here. Okay. So. By delaying the opening of the chest here, let the arms go down this way. Right. And then with that, turn, continue here. Right. Then your, your hands are in front of your body. But right. if you open the chest early, then it drops behind here, right? So instead of dropping this behind, let it come in front of your body. Yes, the elbow comes in front of your body. Right. Yes, yes. So when the elbow goes in front of your body, then it's easy to turn this way. Right. But if this goes behind your body, it's hard to go this way. Right, right. And sometimes it doesn't feel like it's on the kind of mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So your body has to uh, move away to make the space for the arm motion here. That's why you keep moving a lot this way. Right. But if you let the elbow go in front of your body here, and then turn around, you can push the ground down and out, and then limit this motion here. Yes, and then let it go. Okay? So uh, this is something you have to clearly understand. Again, yeah. you, you have the tendency of moving the hands too much toward the target. Right. It's, it, this is typical uh, for those who are relying on the upper body muscles. Right. You have to hit the ball with the muscles. Yeah. But then, the more you do that, you just kill the low body. Right. Because there's no room for the lower body to uh, get involved. Right. Again, okay. remember uh, what we, we did with the rope. So let the hands go away from your body a bit more here. Okay. Instead of bringing the hands uh, way this way. Right. Let it go out more. And then in order to do this, this you should, you should uh, delay the opening of the chest. Right. If the chest opens early, then definitely you will either come close to your body and then it travels quite a bit this way. So, before the body is uh, opened here, if you drop the hands here, then naturally it goes more away. And then with that, turn the body here. Then in the end, you'll be able to stand on the left side here. So it's important to uh, delay opening of the chest. And then they can be also combined with the recentering motion here. So go shift away, and then you recenter here. You still keep the this keep the shoulder turning more that so here. 
the reinforcing. So as you shift away and as you recenter, still you are turning here. So as you recenter, still you are turning the shoulders here. This way you can have early recentering. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you say it's done. So from there, by kicking the ground, and from there, just simply turn. Right, right, okay. okay. So that's a, a good way to mix all this together. Now, swing the club as if you are swinging um, a rope. Swing back and forth. Ah, before before do, uh, we do that, let's first let's do this. So holding the club here, and try to use the wrist here, and then practice this here. Do not move the body a lot. Just pr pretty much here, and then just use the wrist here. And then, without the body turn, without a lot of arm motion, you can see that the clavet can travel quite a bit here. Even, so the wrist motion is really important. Okay? So you have to liberate the, the wrist. Mm, the, the, the hands are going all the way here, instead of here. Even, even less, the wrist, the hand motion, limit it about here, use the wrist a lot. And then as you do, hey, dance a little bit with the robot, robot moves a little bit, have a slight uh, stepping like action, stepping like action. So just the this, just the this. That stepping like action is the backbone of the rhythm. Okay. Now try to uh, turn the pelvis a bit more actively. Turn the pelvis, turn the pelvis, turn the pelvis as you do that. Uh, no, no need to go that far. No need to swing that hard. Still the same motion, but this time add a little bit of pelvis motion, then you will feel it's uh, easier. Okay, now make the arm motion bigger. So bring the arms a bit higher here. And here. So now, the, the, because the arm motion is a bit bigger, the club position is better. Okay. The only thing here is, as you go high up here, try to turn the hand this way here. So imagine this. So if I'm going to, uh, so from this position, let me uh, so demonstrate this. Stay here on this side. Yeah. So here, if I, I want to turn the shoulder by 90 degrees, but still keep the color pointing that way, then my, I have uh, my shoulder turned this way, and then the color is aligned this way here. If I return here, actually the club is going backwards like this. Right. But if you try to align the club more this way, along the shoulder, right. then when you turn the shoulder, the lift shows a crossover position. Right? Right. So when you go back swing, you know to prevent this crossover posture here, right. you have to use the wrist going this way. Right. Yeah, yeah, so palms are facing up. If you have this field here, then you will be able to keep the club head lower here behind. Yeah. With that, the club head will follow the swing plane here. So when you do the back swing, at the end, at the end, try to add this wrist motion here. This wrist motion. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Then, then you can move the hands higher. Without that, what happens is when you move the hands higher, then the club head goes this way. But move the hands higher, and then if you uh, move the hand this way, wrist or the forearm actually, this forearm uh, supination. If you add the forearm supination here, that club head will go this way, and you can drop it so that you can see the club head about here, not here. Okay? 
again, as you swing back and forth, use the wrist motion well. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yep. Yes, yes. Then what happens is, as you swing back and forth, the clavicle will generally follow the swing plane. So, no matter how reverse you are you swing, still you will have fairly consistent swing plane here. Right. But if you don't do this, what happens is uh, the elbow goes out, right. more, more backward here, with this position, then the clavicle goes this way. Right. When crossover occurs, actually this is the swing plane here, then clavicle stays far, quite far away from the swing plane, you have to do compensation over the top or different right. things. Right. But go up here and then you drop the clavicle more this way by introducing the supination motion here. Then the clavicle stays fairly close to the swing plane. Right. So the swing motion becomes really simple. Yeah. And then you just concentrate in the developing the speed. And then right. change the direction and then let it go. Change, change the direction and then let it go. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Uh, more, a bit more, 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 more spinning. Yes, 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 yes. So then, now your swing is quite rigorous. The back swing is quite rigorous, but the clavicle don't move this way that much. Right. It's a lot more stable there. Okay. The reason why people are afraid of uh, best back swing is because if they don't use uh, this that well, then at the end, always the oh, clavicle okay. this way. You make a loop here. Right. It makes it unstable. Yeah, that's what I never wanted to have a nice thing. Like, that was it. So, and then the goal here is you're moving the curve head along the swing plane consistently, right. back and forth, right? Yep. Now, swing toward me. Mm hmm. More supination, yes. Mm -hmm. So, if you keep, if you keep the club head close to the swing plane, still it will be above the swing plane. But if it's uh, relatively close, it's a lot easier to control the motion. Okay. But when it goes out here, then you have to use a compensation to bring this back to the swing plane. Then you are dictated by uh, this body here. Okay. But if you keep it close to the swing plane the swing motion is consistent, then all you need to worry about is just directly good, fast motion back and forth. Okay. So you have to use the wrist really well, particularly yeah. toward the end of the back swing here. So again, if you let the clavicle go, if you preserve this clavicle motion, and then try to bring the clavicle here, then you have to uh, yeah, change, the, uh, change this supination position right. here. Yeah. But if you don't do that, then typically, if you go this way, then the elbow will be lifted, and then it's a baseball swing here. So again, supination here, wait until this is finished, then come down, wait until this is finished, then come down. <laughs> I have arthritis in my hands, oh, no. so it's a lot of pain. Yeah. yeah. So again, as you swing back and forth, use the wrist, uh, then the, the forearm supination at the end, so that you have consistent swing plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And also, also when that happens, when that happens, it also helps this motion here. Right. You're going here and they come down this way here. The hand stays a bit higher right. because you let the 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 forearm supinate here, the club head is uh, staying uh, low here. Right. And on the way down, the hands are relatively high compared to the club head. Then come down this way here, the elbow will be going in front of your body and then right. flip here. Right. But if you go this way here, drop this here, and then try to push this way here, this drops in the old way here. Oh, okay. When you use this motion, this right. motion well here, so the shoulder will show uh, you know, external rotation here, right. and then you have a, a supination of the forearm. When this happens here, all the way down, you are coming down this way, 
and then let it go here. So the elbow tends to travel in front of your body, and then the hands goes uh, more away from your body. Okay. So naturally, when you when you have good position here, yeah. all you need is just to throw and then have natural wrist motion instead of forcing it in certain ways. You have to use the wrist motion quite well here. Yeah. And it's, instead of bringing all the way here, yeah. Now, as you come down here, as you come down, you have to let the wrist go here. Right. Right. Hmm. So normally, what people do is uh, always uh, try. Also, you see uh, some bad bad images on the on TV. <laughs> some some players they actually practice this. Yeah. Even some instructors promote this, but this is actually a killer. Right, well, that's how Yeah, yeah. So go, come down here. Eventually, you have to let the clavicle go before, right. before your hands. Right? Right. You, you cannot go all the way here. When this happens, it's pretty much arm driven swing. Right. Professional players, they can do that because uh, the body allows them uh, to do that. Right. But most of the golfers, when they try to do this, it's simply, you know, Kills the wrist motion here, right. so lose the speed. Right. Okay, now with that in mind, let's go to uh, stage three of the two step swing drills. So, here what we'll do is uh, throw the club first this way toward the target and then bring it actively here and make sure you have this motion here. Mm, and the old way here. Don't try to hold it here. So, mm, Mm, and then swing. So uh, this is called the trigger motion. The trigger motion is designed to head, to make uh, the back swing active. Yes, uh, that's the one set. And then come back here and do another set. Yes. So here it's really important to use the wrist reasonably. It's a natural wrist motion instead of a forced motion. Right. I don't want you to do this intentionally here, okay? or just lifting up like this. Right. Let it go, let it flow, right. using the pronation supination right. enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now the plane is really good. And they give more, more, more supination. And drop the clip a little bit more, so that you can see the clip uh, down, uh, you know, on the left side. Mm -hmm. And then now make the back swing a lot more active. So make the back swing faster. Okay. So using the trigger here. <clears throat> yes. Mm -hmm. Now you are moving quite rigorously, but clear head motion is really good. It's the yeah. swing plane is quite consistent. Right. If you are letting it right. go this way here. Right. Okay. So stage three, again, I will show you the swing plane. So, uh, okay, ready, go, stage three. Ready, go, stage three. Ready, go. Okay, ready. Ready, stay three, go. Okay, now let's see. Ready, go. <laughs> wow, this is different. <laughs> this is because your your back swing is now active. So yeah. housing responds to the back swing rhythm. Right. Again, this is the initial swing. Go. No rhythm. Just try to right. get hard. Yeah. In the down the line view here. Stay three, go. Still the color head is staying fairly yeah. Yeah. close to the swing plane. Down the line view in the initial swing here. Go. The only thing is let's increase the backswing size. 
So let the clever drop a bit more. Okay. So uh, currently, let's say, it's about here. Slightly uh, more than the original position, but drop the clever bit more. So you can see the clever about here. Yeah. Not here, but here. Right. Stage three, is the same stage three, but let the clever go a bit more. Okay. So no fight. Let, let the clever go all the way. You simply, you just uh, let it go down. And it's too low here. Right. When it yeah. goes that way, it's too low. No, no, you don't, you don't have to uh, bow this here. Okay. And then drop it about here. So what happens is, as long as you let it go this way here, uh -huh. even when you keep the, the hands, hands and the, the forearms aligned this way, but if you turn this way more, then it will go this way here. So don't try to do this. If you, uh, it's called the dorsiflexion, if you do a dorsiflexion of the right elbow here, it limits the motion. It cannot go any further. And you tend to drop it too long. So, so keep the, from, the, from this view here, keep the hands reasonably aligned, but you keep more supination here. Yeah. So go all the way. See, let's see. Go to top. And then drop it this way here. Yeah. This is this is what you need. So keep the clever moving along the sh the shoulder line. Yeah. And then the clever goes all the way down here. Yeah, yeah, about there. If you can if if you can do that, then the downstream will be a lot easier and then let the clever go okay. using the wrist. That's better. Mm -hmm. And then keep a bit more time at the top. No rush, wait, let it go. And then throw the, the clever this way. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now the clever position is a lot better. So let me watch from here. Stage three. Let the club head go more. Stay three. So here you don't have to intentionally do anything. Just uh, have natural wrist motion. And all you need is to let the club head go a bit more. Okay, now let me record this. All right. So ready, stay three, go. Almost like a long driver. Yeah. This time he dropped too much, but uh, yeah. okay. One more. Ready, ready. Stage three. Go. Yes. So when you have enough curl motion, you don't need to rush in the downstream. Right. Because of good range of motion here. Right. So frontal plane view here. Stage three. Go. <laughs> this is a bit too much. Yeah. So uh, between the, the previous one and this one, uh, uh, about halfway. Okay. That would be perfect. So you can control this, how much you, uh, you want to yeah. drop the clip it. But then, as you come down here, you see the clip is uh, located close to your right. body. Right. This is the key for the speed. Right. But you don't need any more speed, but right. this way you can generate speed uh, uh, in right. an easier way. So when the swing, when you go through the impact position, you see your body is not shifted this way too much. And then let it go. Right. And then down the line view here. Stage three, go. Yes. So your goal is to uh, let the curve go a bit more. Right. You know, between this and this, about this much here. Right. So uh, if you can, you know, watch the, we can see the curve head right. around your shoulder height here. Right. That there will be okay. Okay. All right. So uh, this is stage three. And then let's do a stage three and your regular swing. Stage three first, okay. and the regular swing. Pretend that there's a ball there. So stage three is your pressure routine. Mm -hmm. And then approach it to the ball, and then come over the similar back swing. Uh, so it's a bit slow. And then uh, you use the arms, but uh, again, 
in the back swing, you have to use the body. Right. So in order to help that, what you can do is um, you can move the body slightly uh -huh. this way and then start the back swing. Okay. It's called the body trigger. Okay. So instead of the club trigger, now yeah. you're using a body and then let it go. Okay. And one is easy way to do that is uh, lift your, in order to lift the right hand, you have to shift it this way slightly, right? And then go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So something like that. It's called the body trigger. And then again, the goal here is to make the vaccine more vigorous, yeah. and then so it should be large enough, and also fast enough. Right. So in order to have fast vaccine, you have to use the right leg really well. So go here, and then, <clears throat> okay. and then you have, you are starting the mower in the vaccine. Yeah. yeah. So and then start the mower. <laughs> yeah. And then let it go. So when you have active vaccine, everything goes really easy. Mm hmm Ooh. Yes. So always remember that when you start the back swing, you are starting a mower. Okay. okay. So uh, from here, pull it uh, more this way here. Okay. Instead of lifting the arm here, pull this way. So body starts first and then bring the... And then this is for all of mm. mm. You will, once you develop this pattern here, you will automatically right. use a similar pattern. And then, uh, since you already have a good distance here, I don't know how much uh, increase in distance you will get, but right. your motion pattern improved quite a bit. Right. But most people who have uh, increase in the distance in the driver, uh -huh. then all the ions, right. they, will, they will see increase in the right. distance. Again, feel the rhythm. Stage three gives you good rhythm here. Yes. Yes. So you have to develop a strategy which will uh, make it easier for you to uh, start vaccine more actively, right? Yeah. So either lift this one here or so turn this way and then turn back. There are different ways. Yeah. And it, this motion does not have to be really big. You can just a subtle motion and then start. As long as you can start the yeah, back swing yeah, yeah. with the body action first, right. and then, so all you remember is that you are starting the mower right. in the back swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then let, it, let the head go up a bit more. And then in the back swing, make sure you go, more. you turn the shoulder enough. Yeah. So in, in the back swing, don't worry about the down swing. Back swing is back swing. Right. So give enough shoulder turn here, right. then you have a good initial condition for the downswing. So okay. downswing will be automatically active. Okay. Again, stay three and uh, regular. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, now the swing motion looks a lot simpler. <laughs> okay, let me record. Both the stage three and the regular. Okay. All right, uh, ready, stage three and regular, go. Mm -hmm. Okay, ready, stage three and regular, go. <laughs> Look at that. So without the ball, currently the the regular swing is really good. Uh, now the, the next question is uh, whether you will be able to do that when the ball, ball is present. But um, stay three and regular go. Mm -hmm. And then compared to the initial swing here. <laughs> yeah. uh, now, now the down the line view here. Ready, stay three and regular, go. Okay. <laughs> and then initial down the leg view. So initial in the initial swing, because your back swing is slow, yeah. 
Mm, and then you try to <coughs> lift yeah. the body up right. and then try to swing hard. Right. But not because of the speedy back swing. Right. Overall, it's a, a lot more rhythmic here and then right. go. Okay. So you have to practice this a lot. Yeah. Okay, from yeah. now on, before you hit the ball, always uh, stay to read your push up with him. Right. So practice diligently. Right. And then, uh, you know, you already got the rhythm, right. which is good, right. but you need to practice more so that yeah, yeah. make it really, uh, you know, yeah. the actual part of your swing. Yeah. Now, let's put the ball here and see how it goes. Oh. So when, when uh, with the ball, if uh, the regular swing is not as good as uh, the regular swing without the ball, then that means you need to practice that a lot yeah. before hitting the ball. Okay? Yeah. But let's do stage three and uh, regular. Yeah. In the regular, hit the ball. Okay. Yeah. So use stage three as your push out routine. Feel the rhythm, yes. <laughs> strike. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty strike. <laughs> so because now, because of rhythm, you're not moving this way a lot here. Right. Then the, you already have a good, uh, the ability to uh, generate good impact. Right. You know, so if you just refine this, it have to be uh, more consistent. Right. That's all we need. Right. So again. Yes, again, strike. <laughs> so let's record this. It's perfect. We don't have to go over anything else. So this is just the state to read your regular swing. This regular swing? No, state to read regular. For a while, uh, you just always use a state three and you're regular. Okay. Okay. Oh, sorry. So, ready, state three and regular, go. Okay, ready, stage three and regular, go. Swing again, frontal view. He stays three and regular. Go. Now you're not shifting them much right. because uh, you're using the active back swing. Then the whole rhythm is based on that, so no need to uh, right. shift this way. And then the down the line view here. Stage three and regular go. And the first view again. Let it go. And then approach it to the ball. So particularly as you as you practice this, in the back you try to use the right leg more actively. Okay. So the, the whole rhythm, right. in the whole rhythm, the, the role of the right leg is really important. So uh, start the mower. Right. So here, mm, start the mower. And from here, mm, start the mower. Right. Okay, yeah. So, uh, perfect. Right. Thank you very much, sir. It turned out really good because uh, initially when you were doing the rope swing, yeah. Still, you had a tendency of this motion, but right. yeah, when well, you told me that, I can mm. Once you uh, uh, are aware of that issue, right. then you started fixing it, and then particularly with the club in uh, stage three, right. when you start using the rhythm, the back swing, active back swing, right. then naturally it went away. Right. Yeah. Right. So just to practice this a lot. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Doc.